Hello Degenerates and welcome to another Duck Hunt Guide. Now this time we're going to be doing another short one. This one is going to be all about the gunmen. So some quick things to go over. If you did not watch my beginner's guide on Duck Hunt and you're very new to Duck Hunt, I do highly recommend you check that out. There's like two things that are about outdated there, but most of it still holds up. So once again, there are five different gunmen, each one of varying strengths, ranges, and speeds that they shoot at. Um, but they do have some universal characteristics. They all spawn on frame 6. Um, your FAF frame, so the earliest you can act, is 42. And then the other things that happened is when you switch from Smash 4, they shoot a little bit, they shoot 3 frames faster than they did back in that game. And then the other thing too is when you do kill one of the gunmen, so for example, let's say that one of them takes a full charge blast to the face, they will stay killed for four and a half seconds. After four and a half seconds, they will disappear. Um, but another good thing that happened too is that now um, when you do have those gunmen that are killed, basically you will um, be able to, they can keep uh, tanking bullets. So basically they act as an indefinite meat shield the entire time that they're out, which was a really good change. And I'll go more into that in a second. So now there are some key ca characteristics. Those are the initial ground rules for all gunmen. The other thing too is that with the five, um, each one will pop up once before they are randomly ordered again. There is no set order to the way they come out, but um, it's kind of but you can determine which one will come out, or at least give yourself a probability. So we had the black coat come out, which means he can't come out again. Now this one with the black vest came out. Now Lanky came out. Then after that, we only have two gunmen left, so it can either be Orange Coat or Sombrero. In this case, we've got Sombrero, and now the next one's going to be Orange Coat. So basically, if you can keep the gunman order in mind, you can determine which gunman's going to come out, which can actually be a huge plus and big advantage to you. Now after that, the order resets, so I could have got another Orange Coat, but now Black Vest is you, so that means um, Black Gunman, Orange Gunman, Sombrero Gunman and orange coat are the ones that would come out next but there is no particular order that they'll come out in you just have to basically kind of um just kind of play the odds and think which one you're going to get and then play around that the only way you can do it is after four of them are used up you know exactly which one's going to come out next so that's a little intro to them so let's talk a little bit briefly about each one uh first one we're going to talk about is the sombrero one that is not him so, Sombrero Gunman, the one I was originally talking about. Sombrero Gunman is going to be the shortest, um, I mean, the shortest range gunman out of all of them. So, short in stature, short in range as well. He is also the most powerful gunman out of the five as well. He is able to kill at 146%, which I'll demonstrate after this. And the other thing, too, is that he shoots at a 70 degree, when they get hit, they get launched at a 70 degree angle. Uh, to display that, we'll also put on the trajectory. And the other thing, too, is that he also does have a hitbox that is on himself as well, the gunman. Um, all the other ones, they all shoot in front of them, but you can be on top of him or in front of him and he'll still hit you. Uh, basically, in this game, you're going to mostly just be using him to get kills and then get like uh, like low to mid percent combos as well, just because they'll be launched a lot farther. Uh, once they're in that higher percent range, you're just going to get good positioning or a raw kill off of it. Like, if you have max rage, he can even kill as low as, like, 130. So, this gunman is actually kind of crazy. It is one that your opponent is going to have to look out for. But, once again, it is only in that short range. Um, one thing that's nice that they do with this game is that... Um, actually, it'll be hard to little see it there. Is that all the gunmen actually do have, like, a little thing that's going to shoot out. It'll show the exact range of how far they can shoot. And I'll pause it when we get there. There, as you saw it there, it kind of goes, in this case, like about 5. So basically from 0 to 5 is about the total range that you get off this gunman. So you can tell, not super long, but base, if your opponent is within that range, it is extremely potent. Another change I forgot to talk about is, back in Smash 4, these gunmen used to be transcendent. So let me see if this one has the reflector. No, it doesn't. So basically, if, you, if your gunman gets reflected and you're still behind the gunman, uh, the gunman will absorb the bullet and they can't hit you. Back in Smash 4, it was transcendent, so it used to be able to go through themselves, uh, but no longer. This means if you're using a gunman against something like Villager's Tree, it's not going to be able to go through it. If there's somebody behind your opponent, like if you're doing doubles, it won't be able to hit them as well. So that is a change that did happen to them, so if you're used to them, that's something to know about.
All right, so the next gunman we're gonna talk about is the Black Coat. So with him, he's actually very unique out of the entire cast. He's gonna be active frame 62, does 10.8% damage. Also, he's able to kill around 180%. But the most significant thing with this gunman is his 50 degree angle. So this one is the second fastest to shoot. So it's a little bit hard to set up with him, but it's like if you know this gunman is gonna hit, you're gonna be able to get a really solid combo off of him if you're in a good position. Uh, but the thing is to keep in mind is that the angle is 50 degrees. This means he sends extremely horizontal compared to the rest. So if you're near the horizontal blast zone, he'll get kills a lot earlier than the other ones. So if you're edge guarding or you're ledge trapping, this is the one that you ideally want to hit with just because it puts your opponent in a much worse position or just straight up kills them um, a lot earlier. So you're using him at the ledge, you'll probably kill at like 150, 140 pretty easily. Um, but if you're center stage, 180% is one he's going to kill, um, especially with Rage. So good things to keep in mind with him. So with him, he has a very unique thing. Him, and, oh, I forgot to talk about this with the Lanky Gunman. Uh, Lanky Gunman and Black Coat actually have a unique death animation, which I'll be showcasing next um, after this is all done, so you can kind of see how they interact where their death animation is triggered by opposite. So with the Black Coat Gunman, if you shoot his torso or his fit or his head, he will go into an animation where his hat will pop off and he'll stay there permanently and you cannot move him at all. During that entire time, he will act as an interactable object. This means he'll absorb all projectiles. And if you hit him with a physical attack, he will also um, like get hit. So that means you can extend somebody's attack a lot longer, so don't run into it but it'll make it a lot easier to whiff punish an opponent too so that's something really good to keep in mind um but yeah with if you have him or the lanky gunman they will act as a very annoying shield against characters for how long they'll stay there and i'll show a video about exactly how characters interact with them uh for this the lanky gunman for him it's if you shoot his uh lower torso and his legs then he will drop his pants and he'll stay there permanently as well so give you a little idea of how this gun shoots and there you go so that's the total range on this one as you can see about that eight range once again that's a uh, total distance you can shoot so that's gonna be about half of that definitely a, pretty sure he's a little bit shorter than what the lanky gunman can do but when he hits somebody it's gonna be um, they're gonna be sent extremely close There we go. So yeah, there you go. They give you a good comparison about how his angle works. A lot lower, um, depending on how you catch DI, some people can just go completely horizontal too. Um, but because of how quickly he kind of comes out, it's a little bit harder to interact off of him. Uh, just mostly because, uh, just mostly due to how quick he is. All right, so the next gunman we're gonna talk about is the Lanky Gunman. So this gunman is actually extremely good. So on one hand, he is the slowest to shoot, but that is not necessarily a bad thing. So in this case with him, he, come, he shoots on frame 86. And with that, he is able to allow you to give you a lot of time to set up. Because as I mentioned before, you are able to act on frame 42. So with that said, you basically have a full 40 second, 40, almost 45 seconds to 45 frames to free roam around and do whatever you want. And with that, it allows you to act independently of the gunman for the most amount of time, allowing the gunman to set up for a lot of things. Uh, the other thing too with this gunman is his range is really good. So um, he can control a lot of space. He has pretty low knockback, but he actually isn't the weakest one at killing. Um, but he's definitely be the best for getting combos to you, um, even getting some kill confirms. I believe you'll be able to do that with him the easiest out of all of them. Uh, if he hits, he's going to send them at a 65 degree angle. Damage he does is 9.6, and he's able to kill at 179% on uh, uh, final destination. So, good thing to keep in mind if you want to get an idea of the range that he has. There. 
So it's a lot farther than what the other ones has. It goes about this total distance. So yeah, there's the sombrero one again. That's how far that one can shoot. That's how far that one can shoot. Basically, um, for them, every gunman can shoot about the eight blocks except for the sombrero. That's kind of the general rule. Most of them are going to have the same amount of range. There we go. So, I guess the other thing, too, that this gunman has in particular is it looks like he does have the most amount of range. The range on these gunmen, like on most of them except for the sombrero, are pretty minimal changes. They'll basically hit about at the same range, which is going to be... Half of FD is the way that I like to gauge it, and the sombrero is a quarter after FD. That's, that's the way that I like to look at it. If you can keep that in mind, you'll understand what they're able to cover. And you can see, look at that line. That is the entire hitbox of what he's going to be able to cover. It may, B-Gunner may just be out of range there. So keep in mind, after you summon him, you are going to be able to act independently of that entire constant hitbox there. So that just gives you a lot of room to play around with. So if you have a can there, you could be controlling the air while the duck, it, while the dog is acting independently and all that. So you can have like a whole mess of things coming out there. In this case, it's actually going to hit him. There you see the 9.6% that it does as well. Um, so... Overall, this gunman is going to be one of your best friends to use when playing Duck Hunt. Um, I'll show you some more applications you can have them later. Just some trajectories there, gives you an idea of how far he's going to send. So you can see at 100%, he's not going to send too far. Um, you would be able to combo into a down air for the kill on a, a couple of the cast. Uh, the other thing too is that the DI real bad, you could also get a bear to kill. Up air shouldn't kill unless maybe with max rage on a low ceiling. But other than that, yeah, you, you can definitely get kill confirms off of this if they're like at 120. All right, up next we have the Orange Coat Gunman. This one is going to basically be your Clutch King. This is the fastest acting one. He acts on frame 50, so... Generally, um, so if you're using this one, you literally only have eight frames to act before he shoots. That gives you an idea of how quick that this one is. So you really got, um, when you use him, he's basically going to be stuffing out your opponent before they hit you. And he's also going to be able to kill too. He kills at 158%. So um, really, really strong, really quick. If your opponent's just kind of not ready for it, then... Um, He's going to do a really good job of uh, just killing or just putting your opponent in a bad position. The angle that he sends at is 64. So, you know, it's going to be kind of, they're going to be sent very diagonal in this case. Uh, most of the time when they get hit by this, he does 12% as well. So he's really good for racking up damage. Um, so this gunman, as I said, mainly for that, you're not going to really be comboing off of him as that is pretty hard to get because he is so quick. Um, the, the main thing that he'll do is he's really good for conditioning. Most gunmen, as I mentioned, like they're, it takes longer than 60 frames for them to act. The fastest one after him being Miguel, which is 12 frames slower at 62, the black coat. Um, and what this gunman will do is he'll force your opponent to shield a lot more often or force them to jump a lot more often than they're used to. And then like really keep them on their toes. Like this one, if they treat all the gunmen the same, if they run up and shield, then that's one thing. But like if at first like, oh, I can just run up and hit you, then they're going to be doing that until the orange coat comes out. Orange coat will mostly be the one that stuffs them out and forces them to think about putting up their shield and all that. If they don't know the timings of these gunmen, this one will force them to really learn it. So once again, um, killing, stuffing out, getting positioning is mostly what you're going to be using him for. He doesn't have a special death animation at all, so if he falls over, he'll just fall over on his legs. And the good thing is that his legs do go up high enough that it will block most projectiles out there. So good things to keep in mind with this one. Useful, but his utility is yet less than the others, but no less important. And to give you an idea of the range that he has, it is about that far. And then if you want to see what he looks like when he hits them. Okay, there, that gives you about a good idea of like um, what he does. So he sends up pretty vertical, going to be mostly going to that diagonal blast zone. But super quick, hits him very well. So remember his uses for it, conditioning and just getting that kill and good positioning.
All right, now we get to the final gunman we're gonna talk about, which is gonna be the Black Vest Gunman. So this one is like the least impressive out of all of them. He doesn't really have anything that special about him. He's just kind of average and you're not gonna really ever expect this one to kill. This is the weakest one out of all of them. Um, the other thing too about him is that he does the same amount of damage as, as the Lanky Gunman, which is 9.6%. He's a little bit quicker. He's active frame 74 versus 86, so he's kind of like the most middle gunman. He's also not that tall, so it's harder for him to block things, and he doesn't have any special death animations as well. Uh, he kills at 195% at center stage, so really, this like this one's like the older gunman where you don't ever expect them to kill. Like, they'll, they'll be at a very dire situation before they die to this one. The angle he sends is at 64, too, so... Again, you're gonna go diagonally to those blast zones, so another reason why that they'll live for a while. But, of course, since he is frame 74, his power isn't too great, you are gonna be able to combo off of him fairly well, which is the best thing about him. Of course, he's also gonna be able to block projectiles. His legs stick up enough that most projectiles won't go um, over them as well. Um, so that way he's got that use as a meat shield too. Uh, but other than that, yeah, he's going to serve the same purpose as, an, as every other gunman. So he's going to be a good assist. Uh, isn't super slow, but is de isn't super fast either. Isn't going to kill. So that means you'll be able to get those uh, kill confirms off of him in that specific range. And yeah, he also has a good amount of range that he covers with his shot. There we go. So a little bit shorter than what Orange Coat has, or maybe just about the same. But kind of right where Meek understanding, except a little bit in front of that. So that's gonna, it's gonna be about eight, seven, seven and a half uh, blocks is the battle he's gonna go, which again, is close to half of FD. That's that's the amount of range that he's gonna cover. Uh, probably one third would be a little bit more accurate. One third of FD is about the range that they're gonna cover, so keep that in mind that is space that you can control entirely if they choose to focus on the gunman that just puts them at lag so if they shoot it with like a charge shot that means they're wide open and can hit um or if they did it when you summoned it then obviously you know you, you just basically have kept yourself safe you can set up a can freely if you want and they wasted their charge shot on that so that gives you more reason to close in if anything but yeah that is the individual descriptions of each one from themselves and next we'll talk about some other things that you can do with them. Alright, so the next thing we're going to talk about is how do you utilize these gunmen against most characters? So in neutral, so whether it be against those projectile characters or if you're fighting somebody. So basically, the main thing you got to remember is this is space that you can control. So off of that, you're able to um, act independently of the gunman. Most people like to think of Duck Hunt's projectiles as individual entities, kind of like a charge shot or something like that. It's like, oh, I can't move. I got to hit him with the can. The way that you've always got to think about Duck Hunt is that most of his projectiles are assists. Um, the only one that kind of isn't like that is the Clay Pigeon. Clay Pigeons, if you kind of throw this, you hope it hits them, and then you're going to just do a move off of that. The rare exception is if, you know, you drop it on the ground, and then you just explode it there. So that's the only time Pigeon's independent. Most of you are not using that way. Cannon gunmen are definitely the big exceptions. Uh, the gunmen themselves, as I mentioned in my beginner's guide, is a lot like a Marvel beam assist, is that, you know, they just come here, and they'll just cover the ground for you, especially Orange Coat, as he just um, acts so quickly. So the, one of the main things that you can do is you can get combos off of this, so then you can just follow it up with something else that would be stylish. And that one just is a little bit too powerful. And then if you get a good read off of it, then you know you get something like that as well. If you expect an air dodge, you can probably get a smash attack off of that. And that's really the way that you're going to be using gunmen. There are going to be some stage-specific things with them. So, for example, if we go to Battlefield later on, actually, we can go there now. Um, put on control real quick. If you go to something like Battlefield, you can also keep in mind on exactly um, how the gunmen are going to be placing the opponents on those platforms. So, let's say that I have... Let's see which gunman I get. So I get the Sombrero Gunman, now they are going to be locked on there and they'll be forced into a tech situation. Um, 
The only time that you're going to be getting them at a percentage where they can realistically die is if you get the, the Black Coat Gunman, where they get sent horizontally, then that one could lead to a good tech chase situation where you could go for something like Down Smash or even like F Smash if you're, if you're, if you like, you know, you land at the edge and then you just cover every option with that move. Um, with F Smash, you can kill them at 70% pretty easily, especially if you have Rage. Um, but other than that, the gunmen just aren't going to be setting up for those situations where they're going to die off of it, unless you're going for something off the top platform. Um, but then again, it's going to be a little bit harder to kill at the percentages that they're going to be launched there. So, most part, you're going to be focusing on using this for the ground. If, they, if your opponent needs to land and you have a gunman out, then they need to know the timing so they know when they can land on here. So if I throw this out here, then it's like, you know, if I get hit by that, then I'm going to be sent off and Duck Hunt can just advance. If he gets the hit, I can throw out a can, and then I can pressure them, and then if I miss my attack, I can have the can come behind me there, and then just, like, protect me more, so there we go. Then I can do that. If I was lucky, then I would be able to do more um, shenanigans with the can combos after that. And that's going to be the way you're going to be utilizing Gunman. The other thing, too, to keep in mind is Gunman can shoot can. The only one that doesn't off the ground is going to be the Black Gunman. This was a change that they actually made in the most recent patch to um, Smash Brothers. Before, none of, basically, none of, it would be really inconsistent if they hit it. But now you can have it as a consistent way to um, um, get pressure out there. So one setup that I loved doing in Smash 4 was this. And now you got the... the uh, air behind you covered with the can being there so then that way you're just able to get like a lot of things ready and you're just able to get like a really good quick setup going except for that one because <laughs> that one's not going to do it so that's always a good strategy to keep in mind um the other thing too the one that most duck hunts the one that people learn fairly quickly is um shield and then you just um they get forced to shield off of having the gunman there it's like, oh no, I'm scared, and then you just grab them. So if you time your grab perfectly, you, the gunman can hit them, block in the shield, and you can get a guaranteed grab. But they're not in shield stun for that long at all. Um, in fact, why don't we do a frame by frame so we can see exactly how much shield stun that they have. So, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... So basically, you're stuck in um, 12 frames of uh, 12 frames of shield stun. So it's not super long, but that that does give you a decent amount of time to get a shield grab on them. Especially with this one being one of the weaker ones too, it, it gives you a good idea of exactly how long you have to get that grab. Decent, but unless you like are you know the timing of the gunman and you know exactly how you do it, and your opponent doesn't read that, that's gonna happen. Um, I would I would say early on if people are having re are just constantly holding shield one gunmen there of course go for it but if you see them like start to spot dodge after the gunman that means you're being way too obvious with it most beginner duck hunts um, this is something that they get punished for constantly they assume the second the gunman comes up they're guaranteed to grab you're not that's only if you're you know the timing you know it hit their shield and everything and your opponent just doesn't react to it properly that's the only time it's really gonna work. Good thing to implement in the beginning, but then you use it more as a mix-up later on, so that way it's kind of a guessing game of, oh, they put up shield, are they going to jump? You just watch their habits, you'll figure it out. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to be showcasing in these next clips is exactly what happens when you knock them down. As I mentioned, if you do knock them down, they are able to take hits well after they die. So, because of this, they can protect you a lot. So we'll show you how they interact with several characters, probably like the most important ones that you'd want to know about, and some obscure ones too. Exactly how they interact once the gunmen are down, so that we can get a good idea of what uh, gunmen you can hide behind versus what projectiles, and what uh, characters can do against these down gunmen's to really try and out camp you. Because it's kind of important to know for these projectile matchups. Thunder! 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 
All right, so the next thing that we're going to be talking about are kill confirms with the gunmen. Generally, they're going to be around this 115% range. Uh, if they get a little bit above this, it becomes really hard to combo off of them. So I would say with Rage, it changes quite a bit. The windows can be tight. Also, DI is going to affect it as well. But generally, this is the percentage that you're going to want them to be at to really get those combos off for them to kill. Orange Coat, you're basically never going to be comboing off of him unless you can get like a good read into that back air. Blanky Gunman and this one in particular though, those you can combo to death pretty easy. As you can see right there on a mid weight, 115, you can combo perfectly into that up air for the kill. And there you go, once again, you don't even need to get every single hit in there. Um, Orange Coat, you just got to be fast about it. Same with the Sombrero. You're not going to really be able to combo off of him too often. Lanky Gunman. The only way that you're really going to be able to combo Sombrero or the Orange Coat is if you time a back air really well to get the kill, and you need to get a strong hit too. In that case, like, I was too early there. Lanky Gunman is going to be really nice for getting that combo just because you have so much time to set up, so you'll get a good idea if that they're going to get hit or not. The main thing is that you need to use, like, the full extent of both double jumps in order to get that kill. So if you're going to go for kill confirms, remember the main ones you're going to really get it with is going to be Lanky and then the Black Vest. Of course, you need that for running start too as well. But you don't even, you it's pretty lenient on the timing if you want to get it. Orange coat, not as much. And there you go. But the black coat, gunman, if you're lucky enough, you'll be able to time it to get that um, back air. Which might be something you want to do. You can even do lanky gunman into a back air. So if you're closer to the ledge, that might be something that's better for you to do. The other thing is you can actually get footstool combos off of them. So if you want to do something kind of stylish and doubles, that is an option you do have available to you. This is the yeah, orange coat gunman. Almost impossible time to hit for that one. So, yeah. Orange coat, kill positioning, lanky, black vest. You can actually get kill confirms off of it. Um, plan to do that from like 110 to 120 will be about your range. You might be able to go a little bit lower if you have enough rage and your moves are fresh, but that's kind of going to be the golden rule. Something else you can do if you're feeling pretty risky is that you can actually combo gunmen into a clay pigeon as well. Um, with the orange coat, it's going to be a bit harder. Something like um, the, the vest and lanky gunman, that's going to be a bit hard to do. But as you can see right there, because of the way the particle hitboxes work, it's going to be pretty... You can actually get some really good positioning off of it. Um, even off the orange coat. So you might actually be able to get a kill. In that case, if I had rage, that up air would have killed. So that's something to keep in mind too, is if you do get these gunmen, do remember that you are able to get those things. So like right there, um, basically by having... So by putting out this gunman, play pigeon, rage would have killed in that one in that case. But um, if you don't aim your up air properly, they can fall out of it. Um, actually, this might be a really good tactic to use with those stronger gunmen if you get them at this percentage over here. Just because of the seat. So, there. Now, I basically have free range to get that up air. So, if you want to get actually those extensions off those stronger gunmen, that's going to be a pretty good option for you to go for. Because by having that there, if they're aggressive, then the clay pigeon will break and then it'll kill them. If they double jump, well, they don't have any more resources anymore. So you might be able to get a really good um, landing read off of that, especially if they do a directional air dodge. You can probably get a smash attack, if not, down air them. A lot of things, a lot of creative things that you can do off of it. Um, or even another clay pigeon too. Okay, that guy's also a little bit too early to find animation. So yeah, that's a good thing to mow. Uh, the other thing too that I'd recommend is when you do have like the, the stronger gunmen that are hitting, don't do the hard toss as it'll go too far away. You're gonna wanna do the soft toss on Clay Pigeon. Unless it's that black gunman. Black Coat Gunman, you probably are gonna wanna do, um, you're probably gonna wanna do the hard toss with them. The Clay Pigeon will actually break because it has to, 
Oh, actually, okay, so if you double jump it, you're gonna be able to combo into it. Oh well, I found a new kill confirmed. So, if you get the orange coat gunman, you read the DI, hard toss clay pigeon into them, combo that into it up there, and they'll actually, if it's a mid weight, they'll actually die to that, so. Good stuff to know, uh, if, especially if you have rage, that's going to kill a lot easier. It's just the gunman's uh, knockback is going to increase a lot more, so you do need to adjust uh, when that combo is going to kill for that very specific reason. Alright, before we get to the conclusion, something I do want to talk about very quickly, since you did make it all the way to the end here. Um, we are doing another donation drive for Rido, so if you do want to see him come all the way back to CEO 2019 and race him more how, this is a way that you can do so. Uh, if you saw him come to Papa 3, you know, he got second at that event there, showing, you know, how good Duck Hunt can be in this game. And, you know, if you saw CEO last year, you've been a longtime fan, you know that Rido did get top 8 had a, one of the best sets in the entire world against MK Leo. Game 5 last hit, almost got his way to winner's finals there, but secured a fifth place there. And, you know, definitely this time around, he's looking to take that whole tournament home. So if you're looking to see more great Hunt Duck on action, more VODs you can study, and just, you know, help a dog go out and get him back to the States, this is your opportunity to do so. Of course, there are multiple ways you can support. You can help share the donation drive itself. You can buy merch from the Duck Hunt Discord, and all uh, proceeds from that will go directly to this goal. If we don't happen to fill the goal, the funds will go to whatever event he decides to go to next. But I'm pretty confident that we can get this done, guys. I hope you guys have, you know, found new belief in him after Come to Papa 3. For those of you who did support him, thank you so much for doing so. We're going to continue to keep doing our best over here to keep supporting our fellow Duck Hunt players as much as we possibly can. Let me know what videos you want to see in the future. Somebody commented they wanted to see a, um, a gunman guide. That was the whole reason why that I made this, kind of explain them more in depth. Um... When I do get around to getting more better equipment and all that, I will try to make sure I make um, a better version. Of course, as patches come out too, I'll make an improved thing of each one of these things that come out that are updated with the most relevant information too. So please let me know what your thoughts are, what you like, what you didn't like, things that you want to know about that I didn't cover. If I didn't cover anything in here, let me know in the comments below. So you guys have followed me, you know that I reply to all of your comments. Literally, there's like maybe like five that I've never replied to just because I didn't really need one. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, always read, always reply. Guys, we're also so close to those 1,000 subs. The second we get to those 1,000 subs, it'll actually make, it'll actually do a world of good for these donation drives as well, because I can put those YouTube proceeds to that. If you don't know, once you do hit 1,000 subs, you can actually start monetizing your videos there. So that way, whatever little ad revenue I'm able to collect, I can at least put it towards these goals. So that way, by you guys just watching these videos, it actually will help us get more Duck Hunt action out there. So guys, once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and make sure you guys take care of yourselves.